Hi everyone, um, my name is Ken. Welcome to our midweek um, reflection and prayer. Uh, we're just really happy that you can join with us here today and um, we just hope that um, you get to pick up something and um, that, that this can be useful for you, right? 
um, because I mean, this is just, I, I keep saying this every time I speak to anybody, it's just a, a really weird time in, in, in this world. And um, every once in a while, it just kind of creeps into me. Uh, it happened maybe two or three weeks ago when I just asked myself a question that I think you may have been asking yourself as well. And it's sort of like this, why doesn't God do something about this? You know, I mean, the, not just the pandemic. I mean, th this is this is just affecting everybody. But there's been things that you have asked personally. God, help me achieve this. God, take this away. God, heal this. God, you know, help me with a job. And there's all these things that you've asked yourself, God, why aren't you doing anything about this? And um. You know, like we, we, we pray and we pray and we pray. And honestly, sometimes it, it gets really tough because God's not answering. And, and, and then what makes it worse sometimes is, you know, like some of your friends maybe, or they'll say like, hey man, you know what? I was really late and I was running late and I was praying that, you know, there wouldn't be traffic in, in this area that's always full of traffic, which if you're living in Cebu, then that's everywhere. But you know, I prayed and God made me get there in 30 minutes instead of 45 minutes. And you know, you're thinking like, what? God answered your little traffic prayer. I'm here praying for major health problems. I'm praying for a miracle in my in, in, in my job or I, 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 need, I just need some money to come in somewhere, somehow. And, and it just gets really difficult because you, you hear these people getting their prayers answered and, and God is seemingly not doing anything for you at all. And, and, and the tendency is in these times where God is just, just quiet, the tendency for us to think is to, is to think that if God is silent, therefore God must be absent. Now, I know for a lot of you that's really blasphemous. You wouldn't even admit to yourself or anyone that you've actually thought that, but, but there's some truth to that, right? I mean, sometimes we just lose hope or sometimes we lose faith or sometimes we just, ah, uh, whatever, whatever. I don't know what's going on. Um, and, 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 and the truth is, and I could stop this right here, but you know, it's not very useful if I was just simply tell you the truth is that God is never inattentive. God is never uncooperative. And God is never late. And, and God is never absent. Oh, fair enough. Good point, Ken. Um, what am I supposed to do with that? Well, I, I kind of want to tie this into a story um, most of you probably know it. Um, most of you know a guy named John, um, John the Baptist. Um, that wasn't his last name or neither was he a Baptist. He just baptized people. And that's why people called him John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist, he was this really crazy guy. He lived out in the desert, was eating locusts and honey and um, dressed in animal skins. And he probably smelled a little funky um, but John the Baptist was obedient to God and he basically he's the guy that announced Jesus to the world to his community he, one day he was baptizing people in the river and he stopped what he was doing and he said look the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world stop following me that's the guy that you need to be following and throughout his ministry, John the Baptist's message was really simple. Stop. Stop sinning. Stop. Just stop. Stop. And one of the things that he did that got him into trouble was he spoke out against Herod and his wife because Herod had married his brother's wife. Um, it was just really weird. It was really inappropriate. Uh, just a funky story. Um, John the Baptist kept saying, stop sinning. You can't do that. You're living in um, adultery. You're living in sin. You can't do that. Stop. And Herod or Herod's wife had him thrown in jail. So um, this is kind of where our story picks up um, because <clears throat> John the Baptist, who announced Jesus, who, who did everything right, who was as obedient as he could be, ends up being in jail for 
doing everything right. And sometimes I feel and you feel that this whole COVID-19 pandemic has put you in a little bit of a jail. I mean, it might be a pretty jail. You might have a couch in it and I'm sitting in air conditioning and you know, my jail is very nice, but compared to what we're used to and how we're used to going out and going to the mall and going to the restaurants, and it feels like a little bit in prison. And these are the times where we think to ourselves, why won't God do anything about this? Why hasn't God done anything about this? And the truth is, John the Baptist in his small little cell, he started feeling the exact same way about his faith. He was starting to lose hope. He was starting to lose faith. He was just deteriorating and he was rotting away in prison. And somewhere in that time, John's world became not much bigger than his prison cell. And he started to have doubts. And when he started to have doubts, he called his friends to him or the next time they came to visit him. And he said, hey guys, um, look, uh, I, I need you to ask Jesus a question. And the question that John the Baptist wanted to wanted his friends to ask Jesus is a little bit maybe unsettling for us because we know and yet we do have doubts sometimes whether we admit it or not it can be a tough time so here's the question in Matthew chapter 11 verse 3 um, <clears throat> Jesus basically says hey can you go ask Jesus are you the Messiah are you the are you really the one or is there someone else that we're waiting for now, imagine being John's friends, right? They're like, whoa, time out, John, come on. You told us this is the guy. I mean, this guy is amazing. We've seen, we've seen what he's been doing out there. It's so like, yeah, you know what? I know, I know, I know. I just, I just need a little bit of a shout out. I, 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 I need Jesus to show me, tell me, give me a sign, something. Because I'm losing my mind over here. So the friends go and ask Jesus, and Jesus' answer um, was quite revealing for us um, 2,000 years later here, today. Um, he says, why don't you report to John what you have heard and what you have seen? Because while John is sitting in prison, there's other stuff that's happening. Jesus is doing stuff for other people and Jesus is doing things in the community and in the world. The blind are seeing, the deaf are hearing, the lame are walking, the dead are being raised, and the good news is being proclaimed. And then, just as, just as Jesus' friends are about to walk away, um, Jesus kind of adds something which is really, really tough to understand. And what he says is, Blessed are those who do not stumble away on my account. Wait, what, what, what do you mean by that, Jesus? Yeah, um, tell John, don't lose faith. Blessed are those who do not stumble away or lose faith or just stop believing because of something that I've done or something that I haven't done for them. Okay, so Jesus, you're saying that you could do something about this. Like, yeah. But you're just going to let... John the Baptist rot away in his cell. Yeah. Well, is it like, you don't like John the Baptist? Did he like do something to you when you were kids or something? It's like, no, no. I just need you to tell John, hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. Because blessed is anyone who does not stumble away on account of me. Actually, I, I, I believe that John the Baptist is the greatest guy that's ever lived. And you're just gonna leave him in prison? Yeah, tell him to have faith. Tell him not to give up. Tell him do not lose faith because I didn't get you out. That, that is tough, right? That's difficult for us to swallow because we always say that, you know, God has a plan. But what? What? What is that plan? I, I just need to know. That is tough. See, the thing is, what we have to realize, and we might not like to hear this, is that John the Baptist was going to be in prison 
no matter how much faith he had, no matter how obedient he was, none of that mattered. This situation was just a situation that he was in. And there's a little bit of good news in that. And I just want to tie that in real quick because um, what we have to understand as good works, as God is doing miracles every single day, maybe not in our life, maybe he's not answering prayers the way we want him to answer prayers and at the timeline that we want him to answer in, but things are happening out there. There's good news being proclaimed out there. There's good things happening. And here's the good news that I want to share with you is that your personal circumstances do not reflect how God feels about you. If you want to know how God feels about you, if you want proof on how God feels about you, all you need to do is look at the cross. When Jesus died for our sins, for yours, for mine. That's the proof that we have. That's the proof that we need. So when God, when, when God seems inattentive or when God seems <laughs> uncooperative, can I say that? Um, when God seems uncooperative with what you want him to do, look around. Look around you. Look back. That's actually a good one. Look back because there's things that God has done in the past for you, answered prayers in the past. That God was real to you then, right? Well, that is the same God here today. Remember that. Remember those answer and those, those answered prayers from the past. And um, today, we're kind of sitting in a jail cell. We're kind of sitting at home, just twiddling our thumbs. We're just trying to binge Netflix or whatever it is, Korean novellas, K-pop, or I, I don't know what you guys are into nowadays. But um, it's kind of a cell. This is what we're doing. This pandemic that we're in. We have to understand that this is still God's plan. We have to understand that God has not moved an inch off his throne. Because look again in verse 11, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Blessed is who? Anyone. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble away or does not lose faith on account of me. So... Here's what I want you to do. Um, here's what I want us to do for this next week and this upcoming week until we meet again. Um, as things don't change, as, um, as God does not answer some of our prayers or all of our prayers, or as God is not doing changing things the way you want God to change things, um, let's remember that you can remain faithful that you can wake up every single day knowing that God loves you and God loves you as much as he's ever loved you and cannot love you more and your current circumstances is not a reflection of how God feels about you. If he allowed the greatest man who ever lived, the greatest man who ever lived to rot away in a dungeon, a man he said that he loved with all his heart, a man that was his forerunner, a man that announced him. You can never, ever, ever, ever have doubt that God loves you, that God has concern for you, that God cares about you, that, that God cannot take what, this, what seems like wasted time and turn it into something that you've never, ever even imagined because God may be silent, God, God might not be doing things the way you want him to do things right now, but God is never absent. God is never inattentive and God is never, ever, ever late. Blessed is anyone who, doesn't, who does not stumble away on account of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for preserving the story for 2,000 years, oh Lord. Thank you for sending this, this message to us that goes right into our circumstance. Thank you, Father, that this message has dropped right into the midst of our lives, in the midst of our homes, in the midst of our hopes and dreams, maybe, in the midst of our businesses and our jobs, oh Lord. And Father, Whatever it may be, wherever it may be, 
And I pray this a lot, O Lord, but give us the courage. Give us the courage to hang on. Give us the courage to believe. Give us the courage, O Lord, to, to, to worship you in spite of what's going on in this world. Father, I want to lift up um, every single family here, O Lord, that is, that is represented. Father, I want to lift up our, 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 our frontliners. Um, just may you continue to bless them with more and more courage, O Lord. And Father, I want to, I want to, um, I want to pray, O Lord, that our scientists somewhere along the way find a, a real vaccine for this, O Lord, um, so that we can move on and, and start moving away from this whole pandemic, O oh Lord. Father, um, as my daughter prays, dear God, take away Corona forever. I just wanna thank you, Father, um, in spite of what we see all around us, that your word is being proclaimed and that you have not moved an inch off your throne, that you are king today, yesterday, and forever. And we pray this in the matchless, matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you guys for being with us. Uh, thank you for spending your time uh, with us. I hope that uh, somewhere along the way, the Holy Spirit just puts something on your heart that is encouraging, that you can use to, to get through the next couple of days, these next couple of weeks. And um, we will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.